I gotta get ready. That hole in the ozone layer, you know, that's some serious stuff. Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. What? It's gone? Howdy, chlorofrendocarbons. You've found your way to D News. Thanks for that. Welcome, I'm Trace. If you are a millennial, you've probably spent your whole life hearing about the hole in the ozone layer. Before you can understand the hole, though, you gotta know what the ozone layer is. The ozone layer isn't really its own thing. Instead, 90% of our ozone floats around in the stratosphere, about 6 to 30 miles above our heads. Ozone is three oxygen atoms linked together, O3. When in the stratosphere, ozone absorbs harmful UVB radiation, protecting us and other life here on the ground in the troposphere. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, people were just beginning to harness the power of refrigeration using toxic gases like ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide. In 1928, an enterprising inventor at General Motors created a non-toxic chemical for refrigeration called CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. It was patented as Freon by DuPont and sold in air conditioners, fridges, bug sprays, spray paints, hair conditioners, and healthcare products. At its peak, companies were making a million metric tons of CFCs every year. Sure, at sea level, CFCs are non-toxic and safe for humans, but if they get into the upper atmosphere, they're subject to photodissociation, where UV radiation breaks a chlorine atom off the CFC. If that free chlorine finds a molecule of ozone, O3, it will react with it, destroying the ozone by ripping off one of its oxygen atoms to make chlorine monoxide, leaving regular old O2 or oxygen in its wake. Then the chlorine monoxide gets hit by UV and broke up again, so it has to find another O3 molecule to try and stabilize it and the cycle repeats itself. It's bad. In 1977, we were studying the ozone layer and it was fine. By 1981, there were hints that something was amiss. Then in 1984, scientists suddenly registered a giant hole in the ozone layer. They published their findings, and in 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed, beginning the phasing out of CFCs shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, even though the house was clearly on fire, DuPont and other companies insisted everything was fine and fought tooth and nail to keep CFCs legal. But they finally relented after scientific evidence became indisputable. A looming environmental disaster that pitted corporations against the scientific community. Where have I heard that before? Those CFCs can hide in the atmosphere for 40 to 150 years. Without the emission of new CFCs, eventually that free chlorine cycle will stop. If the chlorine runs into some methane up there, it would break up, forming hydrogen chloride, which is stable enough to rain back down to Earth. In 2015, about 30 years after the protocol was signed, the ozone hole reached the largest size ever. But since that peak, due mostly to volcanic eruptions that spew bromine and other ozone-depleting gas, scientists have finally started to see the ozone layer repair itself. A study published in Science this year found the hole had decreased in size from the year 2000, and most of that decrease was specifically because of the Montreal Protocol international policy for the win. Without the chlorine wafting up into the stratosphere, ozone is able to form naturally, when UV light breaks up regular old oxygen from O2 into O3. Without that chlorine to mess it up, this process could restart. It can still be messed up by volcanic eruptions, but overall, without our meddling, the ozone layer may someday be back to normal. Based on this new study, the ozone layer might be back to 1980 levels by 2040. You can actually see how the ozone layer is doing right now on NASA's website. We will put the link in the description for you. Of course, this is science, so we can't all have happy endings. We still need ACs and fridges, and the replacement gas, HFCs, are a potent greenhouse gas. So now global warming is a concern. <sighs> we can never win. But hey, at least a thing that we were fighting for as kids is now getting better, right? But why is there air in the first place? I mean, that's my question. Luckily, we did a video about it. Our atmosphere came into being not long after the Earth cooled 4.6 billion years ago. As hydrogen and helium are extremely prevalent in the universe, chances are our atmosphere contained them too early on. The sun is 98% helium and hydrogen. However, as we were so close to the sun and pretty hot ourselves, much of those lighter, faster moving elements escaped Earth's gravity. What do you guys think? Were you worried about the hole in the ozone layer? Do you feel better about it now? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News, and we'll see you next time.